as we dive into this today, of course, as mentioned quite a few times, we have an ever-changing landscape. And overall, there are many different risk surfaces that you could identify, depending on an organization's individual setup, whether that's yours or somebody that you're maybe assisting with security today and trying to address where these threats lie. Now, due to this, some of the things today that I'll be covering are going to be a little bit more broad and potentially could cover a wider range. Of course, with security, we want to touch on a very layered approach and enforcing every aspect of that. But overall, I'm going to really, really chime in on the things that stay consistent across the board, regardless of whether we're looking at these different environments as on-premise, hybrid, fully remote, and whatever the future may hold for us. Now, with that, the first thing to note in security trends is it's constantly accelerating. And of course, this is something that everybody's really aware of today, but the volume, complexity, and proliferation of these cyber attacks has been getting faster and faster. You know, our world has grown ever more digitally connected, and in turn, access to our environments and our data has increased. This is constantly going to drive cyber crime, and due to global economic impact, it is going to increase the amount of cyber activity out there. With this, all of the leading adversaries that we're seeing are updating and advancing their tactics, techniques, and procedures, and in turn, achieving a scale and sophistication that it makes it very difficult for even organizations that would have originally never thought to be a target, a target in today's world. You know, looking at the past, it potentially took days or weeks for attackers to get foothold in and carry out damage in an organization, but due to that time frame shrinking to those hours and minutes, and our attack surface growing and ever changing depending on organizations needs today and what we have to make do with with the global climate in turn well it's no longer those unlucky few it is really truly everybody out there today that is at risk and in turn needs to focus on security and across the board with this there are many new ever-changing threats we're seeing whether that's brand new exploitation methods out there or techniques utilized to go ahead and move low and slow environments, but there's one in particular I'd really like to focus on as a general PSA to all those out there today, which of course has been noted, and that is going to be something that we'll dive into in a minute. <laughs> I do really want to touch on, once again, that accelerating landscape just to reinforce what we've seen back in 2018, breakout time differences to what we're seeing today. A little foundation on this breakout time is a metric referring to the time it takes an adversary to move from one endpoint to the next. And the purpose of understanding the attacks out there today and what we need to do to stop them and ensure that an incident does not become a breach type scenario, it is a critical metric. As we look at adversaries out there, they put time and effort into this. There's a lot of sophistication in their organizations and in turn want to get their money's worth out of these attacks. So contrary to what the movies and TV want us to believe, it's not simply they get access to an endpoint and then they start detonating everything they have. They want to get that foothold, to get that value out of it before taking this out. So looking at those breakout times, moving from that first endpoint to the next in 2018, we're seeing about nine hours and 42 minutes as fast as time. It's 2021, the shortened in time frame to about an hour and 38 minutes from the leading sophistication amongst adversaries out there today. And to keep a little reference there, what we're seeing as an average remediation timeline for InfoSec teams in 2021, it's about 162 hours. But in comparison, that's quite daunting. It's quite terrifying, of course, and it really brings light to two key things. We need to have the technology, the people, and processes in place to identify, understand, and respond to these incidents, to remediate these before they do become that breach scenario. Now, I would love to touch on this a little bit further. We probably won't have the time today, but please reach out if you'd like to set up a call, talk about specifically the threat landscape and what would be most apparent or relevant for your organization in your vertical organization size, as well as technologies that might best fit your risk surface and needs. For the purposes of this, though, as we're touching on it, when we're talking about a general time frame, organization should hope to meet 1 1060. A minute to detect, 10 minutes to understand, and 16 minutes to fully remediate. Based off of what we're seeing as the current breakout times today, if that is something that you can meet, you're going to be well prepared to stop any incidents from becoming a bridge scenario. Now, with that in mind, to talk about really different factors that is contributing to this, as we saw that real increase in the attack surface and acceleration of attack techniques, looking at 2021, about 38% of threats were malware-based and 62% are malware-free. 
as that has changed over time. We saw back in 2018, malware was about 60% of all attacks, and malware-free was about 40%. So as we see these malware-free type attacks increasing, we also do see the decrease in the time it takes for breakout from adversaries and the acceleration of their threats. Now, with that in place, let's talk about 2022. Unfortunately, the world is ever-changing for us. Now, this time has gone down to an hour and 24 minutes. So they are getting faster. And in turn, we also do see an increase of the fileless attack vectors that they're utilizing, whether that's application exploitation, memory injection, credential harvesting, the list goes on. But particularly, what I'd like to focus on today is what we see as an alarming trend amongst any kind of threats out there. As Jason mentioned previously, you know, 80% of data breaches have a connection to compromised privileged credentials, which was identified by Forrester's research. This keeping in mind that the longest time to detect overall with threats is around stolen and compromised credentials coming from the cost of breach report 2021. Now, both of these are quite alarming in their own ways. Overall, the proliferation of compromised privileged credentials being utilized in attacks clearly points out that adversaries are favoring this as it makes their life easier and what they're trying to achieve. And overall, the time to detect this is being extended clearly because it is a way for them to stay hidden in what they are carrying out today. And a little basis of how this comes into play, let's look at the attack kill chain of an adversary. Now, traditionally, as you imagine, it would start with initial access. From that point in time, they're carrying out discovery. They want to understand what they've gotten access to, the value of it from that point in time, what they might be able to move laterally to next and increase that foothold in the environment. They follow up with privilege escalation to be able to achieve you know, more sophisticated forms of persistence amongst the environment, as well as the ability to go ahead and steal data, carry out destruction type techniques, manipulation, depending on their goal set as a whole. Following up with this, moving into that credential access portion to reinforce their ability to move laterally, spreading that, and then following up with impact. And that right there is where we see that data manipulation, encryption, exfiltration, destruction type event to occur. That is what we would be referring to as a data breach type event, which of course we want to ensure it does not occur. We want to keep organizations safe from that. Now, because of these alarming trends today and the utilization of credentials, what effectively is occurring is an overwhelming trend amongst these as identified by the breakdown of intrusion trends by MITRE here. Valid accounts being used for defense evasion, valid accounts being used for privilege escalation, persistence, execution, is also going to be a follow up from that. And then, of course, the initial aspect here. Now, with initial access, persistence, and privilege escalation, it's a clear indication of why these are overwhelmingly used in breach type scenarios today. And defense evasion is a clear indication of why this could be taking so long to identify, because they effectively have keys to the business. So, being able to use a clear indication on how to access our data stores, our servers, move laterally through management consoles, whatever it may be, with no flags being raised because it looks like the individual it should be. And in turn, jumping steps within that attack kill chain right to lateral movement, which is why we see such an increase in that breakout time. And of course, followed up with impact. So with this, what can we really do about it? Well, there are many things we can't do. It's not something that we can simply break down overall in one specific thing. We want to approach it with layers. Now, for the purpose of this and to cover both you know, on-premise, hybrid, and, and of course the fully remote environments out there today, really started to summarize this into a general theme. Specifically, there are four key things that are going to apply across the board, and a majority of organizations, of course, will have the fifth, although I have run into organizations today that do not even have a network and many IoT devices that they're utilizing just because of how remote everything has been set up for them. The first one, though, next-gen antivirus, Endpoint detection, proactive threat hunting, the ability to stop inherently malicious threats out there today, regardless of whether they're file-based or file-less, ensuring protection regardless of whether that vector of attack is coming in, say, through email or identity-based, uh, user picking up a flash drive in the parking lot, a key piece to keep us protected regardless of what we may see next. On top of that, the threat, the threat hunting looking for the strange and anomalous behaviors being that extra pair of eyes to keep us ready for what we may see next, on top of this, hardening devices, making sure that we're enforcing things such as disk encryption, patching across the board, overall reduction of configurations that are unnecessary or 
closing up ports, removing bloatware that may be present that leads to unnecessary risk in the environment as a whole, patching down these endpoints, whether it's directly updating the operating system or we're talking about specific applications to reduce the potential risk surface that adversaries can utilize in their attack vectors. On top of that, critically, as mentioned by the alarming trend today, lockdown identities. We need a way to, of course, ensure that identities are not being misused and the means to enforce more conditional access around them. Finally, patching our edge devices. So routers, switches, general IoT devices that we may have sitting out amongst the environment can all really fall into this space here. But if they're present for your environment, making sure that you're updating those, locking down unnecessary configurations within them as well, just to reduce the potential vectors that an adversary can utilize in their attack kill chain today. Now, all of this was very, very much generalized as a whole into what can apply to all of these different threat landscapes, depending on an organization's needs and what your environment looks like today. But we would love to take a deeper dive into this. If you'd like to, please reach out to CrowdStrike and we will touch on the intelligence portion and how it directly relates to your vertical, your organization size, as well as what technologies we see organizations within your space typically implement based off of what your workforce is looking like today and what your risk surface may be. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.